it's it's excited uh, time, right? And and looking forward to obviously the start of this game week, but start of the season. And uh, you know, appreciate all the the work and the efforts by many to get us to this point. And and yet, all of that is just for the reason, and, and it's the season. And so, uh, you know, appreciate that. And that's I think part of the reason why I'm excited. I like this like this group and, and uh, kind of the way they've come together, you know, obviously as a, as a team and individual players, coaches, we all got to continue to, to work and, and get better. But it's a, it's a fun group to be around. And uh, like I said, we're excited to get going for the season and, and uh, you know, thrilled actually to be able to open up at home, you know, with fans in the stands. And, and obviously it's uh, – It'll be a heck of a challenge, you know, facing a really good team uh, in Penn State. But but looking forward to getting going this week and getting the season started. Mike's on both sides. Paul, obviously personnel changes from year to year. Teams have different identities. But just offensively, what would you like to see your team do better this year than maybe some things that didn't work as well a year ago? Yeah, I think what, uh, you know, I'll answer it. Two things that kind of st stood out in the in the question. The first is when you talked about you know identity and what I'd like for you know really our offense. The same would be said for our defense and, and special teams. Right, is the identity I think of your good teams. It takes on the, the personality of of the players. Right, and, and, and want it to be that, and uh, collectively want it to be an identity that that. Uh, Complements, you know, the other parts of the team. Uh, th there's no doubt that, you know, for us to be the best team we can be, for us to be the best offense we can be. I think that there has to be uh, more consistency in 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 production. I, I do believe that for this offense to be the best it can be, it's going to take a lot of a lot of different guys contributing. You know, and it's um, and that can be that can be exciting. And, and it's going to take everyone, and but I do believe that to be true with this group, that uh, you know not one guy is going to be able, to, uh, nor should he have to carry it. Right? We've got to. It's got to take everyone, um, and that's what's also what I enjoy about the season is right that you, you got to do it each each play and each day, each game, and and then you got to repeat it, and, and that's how you build. But in the end, you'd like to say you're. You know, you, you were a consistent offense. Paul, you mentioned in the, is that on? I can hear you. Right. <laughs> you mentioned in the past one of your favorite things is seeing how guys grow in their time in college. How have you seen that growth in Fayon Hicks, even off the field, uh, now in his fifth year? Yeah, it's um, – you're right. That is, to me, one of the more enjoyable parts of of what I get to do and be around, and that is the – the growth, you know, growth as a player, growth as a person, and and uh, Fayon is, it's been awesome to see, and uh, and you know now, you know I think he's truly uh, confident in in so many aspects, confident as a player, um, confident as a leader of this team, and uh, and it's come by I think a lot of work, you know, that he's put into it. But while doing that, you know, he's always been a great teammate, and uh, you know, certainly, he's, you know, always thought he's talented. But I, I, I think that it's kind of, you know, as guys mature and and get older, I think you know, you kind of see their genuine confidence and kind of um, kind of puts them at ease, and it's, it's almost relaxes them a little bit more. Even though I think they're 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 playing a little bit more on an edge and sharper, but. You know, I think what he means to this team has been fun to see too, and and his voice uh, is heard, and, uh, and I think it's heard and, and valued because of the way that he goes about his day-to-day -day business. You know, and and it's he's a guy that's consistent, and and I think so when you know the actions that he does or the words that he uses, it's coming from someone that that lives it and lives it every day. That's it's been neat to see. Practice, I think, middle of the month where Joe Chipman appeared to have a really good practice. I was trying to 
next day he was running with the ones. What did you guys see as a, as a staff that allowed you to make that change and, and keep him there as the rest of the camp went on that we could see? You know, I think Tip is just, uh, you know, one, he was, he's, you know, was always were impressed with and thought that he had really good ability and, and liked that his kind of where his, he's, you know, he's young, but, but like his football understanding and, you know, thought that a really good spot for him would be center and, you know, didn't have spring really to work on that. And so this fall camp was going to be really important for him. And, and you kind of see him, you know, each day, uh, you know, take those steps needed and growing, right? And then he's still got a ton, ton of stuff to continue to do, but, but I think takes the coaching points and wants to apply them. And, and uh, you know, it's been, it's been, uh, that, that part's been fun to watch. Paul, about the offense, you mentioned wanting to be more consistent, but as the play caller, do you see more areas where you can create some explosive plays that might not have been there last season? I think that, uh, I mean, certainly every offense, you, you want to be that. And and yet I think that there's a balance that, that needs to happen, that, that uh, explosive plays come in a number of different ways. You know, they can come from uh, the goal is that all 11 guys do their job, right? And and if they can win on that play, then you've got a chance, whether it's a run or a pass, you've got a chance for an explosive play. Now, the team you're playing has good players too, right? And and they have uh, they would, you know, say the same thing. Um, I think that there's also, you know, opportunities that, uh, you know, when you, I think a lot of people think explosive plays, like, okay, we got to throw the ball down the field or we got to uh, create maybe a special. And I think there's a place for that, certainly. But, you know, it can also be, uh, like I said, in a run game where everyone's doing their part and, and you know, uh, someone from the backside is, is coming and changing a, a run from 10 yards to getting that block that springs it for 20 or more. Uh, the same can be said for you know, the quarterback getting the ball out of his hands on time and hitting the receiver right out of his break. So now the, you know, there isn't as much uh, the d defense defense back or whoever the defender is isn't closing on him. Now he can get some yards after the catch. You know, so I think that you, you've got to try to coach and play good football. And I think if you do that, then the big plays or explosive plays become a byproduct of it. You, you know, I think if you've seen it and, and there may be times where you've, you've got a running back and if he's trying to make every run a big run that you miss out on the you know, the three, four, five, six yard runs and sometimes those ones and you break a tackle turn into a big one. So I think you gotta be careful of chasing it. But I think you certainly have to be opportunistic when when they are presented that you feel confident and you can you can take advantage of it. Paul Penn State has a new offensive coordinator. Um, in your preparations, what how do you <laughs> game plan for that? Not knowing exactly what you'll face. This probably happens a lot in a first game anyway. Um, and what other areas do you think Penn State can challenge you offensively and defensively? Yeah, it, I mean, they're, that's you said it in the in first games. There's always whether it's uh, you know they have returning whether it's coaches or the players. You, you know you you try to find a starting point, but you really don't know what to expect. And and quite honestly, you can be in uh, the twelfth game of the season and you're. You know, nowadays you're going to see something in each game that you aren't prepared for, that you didn't, that they hadn't shown on film. And so I think that there's always a balance, and it'll be that way. You know, certainly for us defensively, you know, that you you have to you know have rules and 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 follow it, and you have to go off of what you think uh, they can do, but knowing that it's going to cover really more than just what you've seen on film, right? And and I think um, that's always the challenge, whether it's defensively or offensively in your special teams. And, and, and yet I think when you go back to games in general and particularly first games, you know, I think the number one goal is you, you still try to make sure that you as a team and, and you as an individual unit or individual person, um, 
you, you kind of are buttoned up and, and take care of what you can control. And knowing that you're going to, I think you almost have to prepare them. You're, there's going to be some things that you don't know. And yet it falls into this rule and you're good and go play. Sake. He's always um, stumped me in yeah. school. <laughs> confuse myself more than I confuse you. Um, <laughs> the depth chart doesn't have a lot of surprises on it, but I think one notable thing is that Chez won the starting job at tailback. What did he show you to, to beat out Jalen for that spot? Yeah, I think what he's done um, is he's been really consistent, you know, and, and um, in that I think is it means a lot. And, and as – you know or could easily guess, you know, I think we're still in a position where we've got to have a, a number of backs play and play well. But, you know, I think that he is, you know, that was one that as we went into camp, you know, there was a lot of questions at that position. And yet I think each one of them has taken positive strides. You know, it's been great having Isaac going and, you know, I think with him being able to practice every day, which, you know, in the past that, that wasn't always the case, you know, you, you build some confidence. And, and, and Jalen, you know, he's still young, and it's been good to see him uh, continue to grow, you know. And, and I think Braylon's got some things that he can give us. And, you know, Brady Shipper's done some really good things throughout camp. And, but I think Chez is, you can get back to Chez, I think he's been the most consistent player at that position we've had, and, and, uh, and that's been good for this team. You kind of just hit on this, but you know, Gary Brown was saying on media day that I, in a perfect world, he wants one, work one workhorse back, a good complimentary guy, and then number three and four you can count on. Right. Are you to that? I mean, do you think there'll be more of a split early on until that develops, or where are you in that process, do you think? Yeah, I think, I think that that is – I think all of us as coaches, that's a great world to be in. Um, and it'll be, I think that's part of what will, part of the story that isn't answered yet. You know, to sit there and say, this is going to happen. I don't know that we're there yet. Um, you know, but I think that, you know, that's always a good way to live, right? We got this one and we're going with them and this is the, your change up or this is that change up guy. I think we still got to play the games. So, Coach, while we're talking about the running back room, um, I was kind of wondering uh, Chez's leadership with Jalen's uh, Jalen being young, but Jalen having played majority of the snaps last season, kind of how they've been learning from each other. Yeah, I think that, you know, in all of our rooms and the running back room should be no different. And um, you know, I think Gary sees it that, you know, we all got to help each other. And, um, you know, Chez is certainly, you know, comes at it and has a little different perspective and is you know, kind of been around it a little bit longer. But he was also going through some, you know, learning a new offense and learning teammates. And, um, you know, that's where I think where they've all kind of had to do their part in helping, helping each other. And uh, I think that's where John Chanel has been good for that room, you know. And, and a guy like Ship, you know, he's been around it and probably has as much experience in, in some ways as, as anyone else, you know. Um, it takes everyone, and you know we've kind of always said that around here, and I think it's no more. Uh, the running back room is no different. It, it takes everyone, and, and I think they all can bring something to it, and they, and they have to, to for us to be the best. They all got to help each other. Just wondering how you feel about opening with a conference opponent. If you had your druthers, would you do you like getting right into conference play, or would you prefer a non-conference game to start out before getting into? Yeah, I'm excited that, you know, we're going this week and I'm excited that we're playing Penn State. And and uh, obviously it's uh, you, you open up with a really good football team. That, that's, a, that's a challenge, but it's also uh, a heck of an opportunity. And, and I do, I think it'll be a, what a way to, you know, open up this season. And, and, you know, for us, it's a little bit different than maybe for Penn State in the sense that, you know, it's a home game. But you talk about, you know, going through last season with no fans in the stands and, now you say that our home opener is against Penn State. We got fans in the in the stands. It, it's a uh, that's a heck of a way to start this season, and, and and certainly got a lot of work to do this week, right? To make sure that we're ready to take advantage, because it will be a challenge. Uh, they're a good football team. Paul, um, 
on the other side of the ball for Penn State, that coordinator, their defensive guy has been with Franklin for a, a long time now. You faced him twice. When you study them, what are some of the problems that he might present, either what he does schematically or how he pressures people? And Because it seems like he's able to make adjustments and if they give up some stuff early, it doesn't come as easy later. Yeah, I think, you know, from – I think you're right, Jeff, on that. You know, I think they do a really good job – of of kind of adjusting and uh, and kind of playing the game and, and throughout the game and and certainly you know you think back on those those games and, and and you watch you know you gotta be careful of studying those tapes too much right because they're they're different and uh, you know the most recent was eighteen but you, you do see I think where they do a good job you know really offensively defensively and especially the, I think they've got really good players, and I think they do a nice job of, of kind of finding that right balance of, of um, the scheme can be challenging, and yet I think that you also see the athleticism show up on defense, which you know that tells you that they're also letting them play, right? And, the, and the, I think that's when I look at that, I think that's a sign of a good, a good coaching. You know what I mean that that uh, they're not going to give you anything. Um, if something's happening, they'll they've got some good change-ups. You know, uh, I think it really, uh, you know, how they pressure, when they pressure. Uh, it's, I think they 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 mix that up the right, you know, right way that you've got to be uh, kind of always on your toes with it. And and I think you know, guys play fast, and and I think they've got good players, and and you know, we're gonna see some things. We we're talking about offense. There'll be some things that we. Haven't seen, but I think they're. I got a lot of respect for, you know, their coaching staff. You know, not just James, but their their coaching staff, and and, and obviously I think they've got really good football players in that combination. Uh, that's why they're they're a good football team. Well, you've been asked a couple times throughout camp about Jack Nelson. Not many young guys can break through the way that he has. In your mind, what has stood out about his ability that he started to? generate more looks in spring and has gotten to this point yeah I think the it's the combination of you know that he's physically you feel like he's ready you know and that's a lot of work that's gone into that um, and then I think you know maturity wise you know football kind of where he's at you know he's done a good job of grasping it and, and he certainly applies uh, you know puts in a ton of time with that so that you know, I think he's done everything he can to give himself the best chance. And, and you know, that's what earns you those opportunities. And then I think with it, you know, I think he he, he goes out. And, and one of the things I think he does a great job of is how he practices. He, he practices like it's a game. You know, so he's going to put it out there. And he's going to learn. You know, there's going to be some things he's not uh, flawless, right? But he'll, he'll, uh, he'll learn from it and doesn't repeat those mistakes. And, and so I think... It's kind of the the combination, right? That that physically, um, he's ready, and you know, kind of his approach, he's ready, and uh, I think that's what's put him in this position. Paul Gissing, you have a pretty good idea what true freshmen might see action early in the season. Do you mind sharing who's in that group? Yeah, um, you know, I think that uh, you know we got a number of guys that. They're kind of could show up on special teams, um, and we're excited about that. Hunter Waller will be one of those. Uh, Braylon will be one. You know, I know that uh, Marcus Allen's in, in the depth. Um, I think there's a couple other guys that are getting close. All right, that's. I know you kept getting snubbed early, like the hand was up, the hand was up, the hand was but Just because you screwed that up doesn't mean we... <laughs> Obviously, the first game's still on the way, but how have you liked kind of taking taking back control of the offense and just your new, your new role within the staff? How have you kind of liked that, particularly working with Gray? And I, I mean, I've, I've enjoyed every... Um, I've enjoyed every day that you get to be here, you know, whether it's um, all and there are different, you know, it's each each year is a little bit different, but um, I, I've enjoyed it, you know, and but that's not to say I didn't enjoy the 
times before, you know, so um, I don't know that I, one or the other, you know. I, I I appreciate being able to be here, and I appreciate being able to work with these guys and um, I always get energy from from these players and, uh, you know, from our coaches. So uh, it's uh, feel fortunate.